Apparently, you can't do hand recaps outside because it is so freaking humid. Anyways, I would refer to this as a mid-session update, but it's not. We just finished the session. So, I guess this is a, I guess this is a post-session update. Let's finish this conversation elsewhere. I have a feeling it's probably too loud for y'all to hear me in here. I want to say thank you guys so much for 100 subscribers. Essentially, the way you look at it is this, or the way I've been looking at it, is if you're in a room with 120 something people, that's gonna feel like a lot of people. And again, I'm grateful for every single one of you guys, and I'm grateful that you guys tuned into my channel to watch me, and it, it gives you I guess not you guys, but it gives me motivation to continue to make these sort of videos. Again, I don't know how well you guys can hear me in here, so I think we are going to do the hand recaps back at home tomorrow, but I'm so excited to go do them. Anyways, y'all, see you back at home. So we just wrapped up the session and this is actually my second session since the last time that we have spoke. So the last session I did do at the aisle but it was on a Tuesday or Wednesday night. That's pretty creepy. There's a hearse over there. Last session was at the aisle but it was a Tuesday or Wednesday night. Don't remember. Uh, I think. I think it was Wednesday, but anyways, regardless, it was completely dead. They literally had two tables running. I think we were playing like five-handed for the majority of the night. So, being my first time at that casino, I, I kind of wanted to get the feel of it. I, you know, it's just a beginner vlog or thing. Obviously, when I get more used to it, I'll, I'll certainly be more comfortable, you know, filming. But, um, yeah, so I, I, I didn't do that that session, but this session, I... Got a bunch of hands to show you guys. And I'm so thrilled to share some of these hands with you guys. It, it, this session was like the biggest swing of, like it had the most variance in terms of like how good my hands were. Like I literally went, as you guys see right here, I literally went probably two hours without seeing a face card. And then a 15 minute period made up for all that two hours. So the story of my night simply went like this. It was at the beginning of the night, I did get into a good hand. I'm sitting down with 300 and I am playing 1-2 because that is the only tables that are running here at the aisle and it is eight handed at this time of the night. So it folds around to the hijack in which he limps and I am in the cutoff and look down at the beautiful pocket aces. So I go ahead and bump it up to $10. So when I bump it up to 10, the button actually cold calls and the blinds fold and the hijack player in fact does make the call as well. So going three ways to a flop in which it does come down 10, 6, 7 with two diamonds. So initially not the best flop we could ask for because this does connect obviously with their limp calling range and the button's just calling range. So having no diamond in my hand, it certainly does open up their possibilities to potential flushes and we don't block any two pairs, essentially nothing. So that being said, when action checks to me, I still think this is a board that I need to be firing on 100% of the time, pretty confident in my aces. So I go ahead and bet out $25. And the button flat calls, which is nothing too ordinary. This player, I've never played with him before, but he does seem like he is a very passive player who essentially calls down very light. So not too worried about him. And the 
but the one player that I am worried about is the hijack when he goes ahead and bumps it up to $85. So hits me with the old fashioned check raise and I think for this price I can't fold initially. Um, it's only 65 more and we do have pocket aces. So I kind of just make the call essentially putting him on a lot of draws because again we don't have the ace of diamonds and the button in fact gets out of the way. So the turn is an offsuit nine which Looking at this nine, it is ugly initially, but you got to realize that this hand really only improves eight five, which how often is he playing that hand? And maybe a nine ten. But anyways, I think our aces, truthfully, are probably still good here, and there's still a lot of draws available. So when he goes and jams it for hundred twenty dollars, I do go in the tank and think about it for a quite quite a while. But at the end of the day, we do have aces and. As a lot of people say, folding is in fact boring. So we shrug it and we toss in the chips and go to a river. So when the river comes in another nine, this is actually probably the best card that we could ever ask for because we do now beat all two pairs. And that is especially true when he goes ahead and flips over 10 seven offsuit. So the aces were cracked on the flop of the turn, but the cracker got re cracked. So we scoop it. That was the only eventful hand in about a two hour period. For the next two hours, we got involved in a few hands and the majority of the night went like this. This table straddled probably at a frequency of 75% of the time. So I got caught with a lot of lower and middle pocket pairs that I called a raise pre-flop, not good enough to three bet and essentially just completely with the flop. Anyways, the next eventful hand that we can go over is me about 45 minutes later than that previous hand, and we still are playing eight-handed. So there's three lumps to me, and I go ahead and look down at seven, eight of clubs in the cutoff. I go ahead and bump it up to $15, and we get a cold call from the cutoff, going three ways to a flop, which comes down 10, six, four rainbow. This is a flop that doesn't favor my range whatsoever, but for my exact holding, it is pretty good. We do have a backdoor flush draw, and then we also have a double gutter, so any nine or any five will improve us to a straight. So when they check into me, I go ahead and bet $30 and the cutoff calls. Something to mention about the cutoff is this is the same player that I mentioned last hand that was to my left that basically appears like a very loose passive player. So his call, isn't too alarming initially, but but it's definitely something to kind of be cautious about. So looking for some help on the turn, which does come in the form of a eight of hearts. So our straight doesn't get there, but we do improve to a pair along with our double gutter. So now that I do pick up a little bit of showdown value, it is a question whether or not I want to keep on firing or if I kind of want to slow down and pot control. So against this specific player, again, I'm still fairly new at the table, so I don't have a great read on him. I do feel like that he would be checking down a lot of marginal hands, so that is what I in fact do. I go ahead and check it over to him. He decides that's not enough money, and he goes and bets $55. With our pair and double gutter, certainly a bit too nitty to full now, so that's what we do. We go ahead and make the call. Looking to improve on the river, which does not come whatsoever in the form of a deuce of diamonds. So I go ahead and check it to him and luckily he checks it back. So feeling somewhat confident in my pair of eight. So I go ahead and table it and unfortunately he shows king 10. So I don't hate my line. I certainly think that if I would have fired on the turn, I probably could have sized down and I wouldn't have gotten raised. So from that regard, I probably, that hand probably cost me a little bit too much more money than I could have had otherwise but you know the line makes a decent amount of sense to me so this is an interesting hand in the session so so i have ace queen suited i raise it up and we get three callers going over to a flop which comes down eight ten jack so we have a double gutter on this one just like the last hand and two over cards so all around a pretty good flop and when action checks to me i go ahead and bet out for thirty dollars and we do get a call from the cutoff Again, another thing to note is that this is the same player that I got involved in in the last two hands. So, so again, the very loose passive player to my left. So when the turn comes in eight, this is obviously not a good card to keep on barreling on just because this does not connect, this does not connect with my range whatsoever. So, so I go ahead and take the same play that I did last time, which is a check. 
Looking back on it, I still think I like a check in the spot because of all the draws on board, and obviously this card does not connect with my range whatsoever, so I don't think this specific card is going to get any folds with any hands that call it on the flop. I, again, I go ahead and check it over to him, and he bets $40. So for this price, it is still a bit on the steeper side, but so with our double gutter and two overs, I still think it is a tad weak to fold quite yet. So looking to improve in the river, which does not come in the form of a five of diamonds. So kind of giving up on this hand, I go ahead and just check it to him once again, but he fires out for a measly bet of $30. So when he sizes down to $30, he's either completely nutted or just taking a small stab at it, or he might just be testing the waters with the middle pair. Regardless, that price is just kind of ridiculous so I go into the tank and I actually do elect on a call which looking back at it is obviously the wrong decision because he goes ahead and flashes trip eights with a four kicker which is certainly something to note about this player for the near future so again super loose player and I call down with ace high and get owned so are y'all I'm gonna save some of the hands for later because they get exciting so peace so in this next hand, my notes are not the best, so I apologize for that. But anyways, we are in middle position, and we go ahead and look down at the beautiful ace-king. So we go ahead and raise it to $20, and we do, in fact, get a call from the hijack, and then we also get a call from the straddler. So going three ways to a pot, which comes down a610 with two spades, so we do have the ace of spades so that is not a initial concern right off the bat so anyways i go ahead and bet 25 dollars, and sure enough both players end up calling so the pot is brewing up a little bit here so going three ways to a turn again which comes down the seven of clubs so now there is two flush draws on board but again we do carry the ace of spades so the initial flush draw shouldn't be that big of a concern but with three people in the hand that is certainly something that you can look out for because there aren't really any other two pair combinations that make a whole lot of sense besides ace 10 really 610 should not be in these players ranges but there then again this is the same player that called me with eighth eight for the other hand so anyways i still think i have the best holding in this situation so i go ahead and bet out for 75 dollars and the and the hijack does call once again for 75 and the other player actually calls for less i think he called for like 55 so still going three ways to a river which comes down the nine of spades so the most obvious draw did come in and essentially with this card there isn't too many hands that i think i could get value from with this card coming so I like to just check it, and even though I do have the ace of spades, I think the likelihood of one of these players having a flush just from prior action is extremely high. So I check it, and sure enough, the hijack goes and jams his whole stack in and has me covered. So just an annoying gross spot, kind of knowing I'm beat here. I just go into the tank and really try to convince myself that I am ahead, but in reality, I know that I'm not. So I like to fold, and... Sure enough, knowing that these two players are showing down, I get to see their cards. Sure enough, the hijack shows queen four suited, and the other player shows pocket nine. So he rivered a set, and he was had no business being in that hand whatsoever. But, you know, the best hand, I put the money in when I was ahead, and I did not when I was behind. So can't complain from that concern. All right, in this next hand, we are under the gun plus one, and there is a straddle on the button. Under the gun, goes ahead and limps. I go and look down at two blackjacks, so I go ahead and bump it up to $20. I get a call from middle position, and it, it folds back around to the under the gun player who proceeds to jam his whole stack in for $80. This player, he's he's been playing fairly tight for the past few hands, but he has gotten into some bad beat spots with this other player to my left. So I figured that he may be trying to go after him, and me being fairly active within the past you know, a few periods. So what I like to do is I like to just call on the spot because I do want the middle position to player to tag along as well because I know he can be doing this with a very wide range. 
but unfortunately he lets it go and we are up against pocket aces and we do not improve so we lose a little bit in that one and we're on to the next one in this next hand there is a straddle on the button and we do see a call from the big blind i'm under the gun and i wake up with ace four of hearts so i go ahead and bump it up to twenty dollars and after bumping it up it folds around to the straddler who makes the call and the big blind ends up getting out of the way so some experience from this player is I think he's about five buy-ins deep within the last 30 minutes. No joke. So he is certainly the most tilted player at the table right now. So he keeps on buying in for a decent amount. So I kind of want to target him and essentially get stacks in if I do hit something good. Anyways, when the flop comes down 10-5 deuce, we don't really have much of anything besides an overpair and a gutter ball. So... I think this is a flop though that is fairly dry that I should be able to take down a decent amount of time or I might just be valuing my ace high. So I like to bet $15 and sure enough, he does call. Looking to improve on the turn, which comes in the form of a miracle three, but it is the three of clubs. So we do hit our straight, but the front door flush does come in. But you also have to remember when you're playing heads up, flushes, you know, even though we don't block them, just the likelihood of someone holding a flush in this exact spot, just being heads up, is still pretty thin. So, obviously, going for value in this spot, I go ahead and bet $35. And sure enough, he calls. So, so going heads up to a river, which comes in the form of another three. So, the board is paired, but I don't think that's any likely concern, just because, again, playing heads up, there is a good chance I would have gotten raised if he would have had two pair better. So when he checks it to me, I go ahead and bet $90, but wait, I don't bet $90 because this Christmas, my sister gave me a Christmas gift, which was a customized poker chip with my face on it. Super sweet. So let me tell you why this happened. I, when I rebought, I had about $50 over and you can't have more than $300 on the table once you rebuy. So I had to take off $50 off the table and I put them in my backpack. And when I took the chips out of my backpack to put back on the table, I accidentally put down this custom chip my sister gave me. So this is not valid, obviously. So I tried to bet $90, but ended up betting 65 and the dealer hilariously throws the chip back at me like dude what is this and everyone started laughing but anyways i bet 65 dollars and sure enough he actually calls but he tank calls so i think me betting that fake chip actually got me called as long as it took this player to tank i don't think he would have called 90 so i think this actually helped me out which is <laughs> insane i just thought that was real funny that i want to share with you guys all right, so in this next hand, we're in a middle position, and we look down at two kings. So there is a straddle on board, and the under-the-gun player calls. I go ahead and bump it up to $20, and we do, in fact, see a call from the hijack. And beautifully, the cutoff jams his whole stack in there for $450. Bucks. We snap it off, and he shows us the disgusting news of aces. And let's hope to improve and... You know what? Y'all just watch this. Watch. Oh, well, see, I have a, I, I, my, the suits were taken too, so I just gotta hit a king. Yeah, it's so tough. All right, All right. Okay, dude. one time. Yeah, let's go. One more king. One more king. As y'all just saw, we cracked aces with kings, but we didn't hit one king. We in fact hit two. So we hit quads against aces, and that is good enough for the $200 high hand within the 30 minute period, which I am very grateful for. So yeah, between that and the high hand, we scoop in a massive pot in a 1-2 game.
All right, y'all, last hand of the session. Unfortunately, don't have table foot. It just was literally within the same orbit as the king's hand, so I'm still processing that. But I got this for you. Pocket fours, and we are in middle position, and we do, in fact, see a straddle on board. Under the gun, bumps it up to 15. I call, button calls. So, going three ways to a flop, hoping to set mine. Both these players are fairly deep, and so am I. So when the flop comes down ace high, obviously, no good. We don't have much besides the backdoor baby flush and baby straight, but hopefully we can hit a four, but it checks around. Turns a beautiful four. There we go. We bink our set. Running about as good as possible. So under the gun player bets 20. I go ahead and pop it up to 60, and he calls very quickly. So hoping to see some improvement, which comes in the four of diamonds. I am not even kidding when I say this. We hit quads twice in one session. And he checks, I'm just, I'm just just ecstatic. I jam for his remaining 100, but he snap folds. And for those of you who do not believe me, table 20, seat two, table 20, seat two. Not kidding guys, I straight up hit quads twice in one session, but I wish that you guys could see it on camera because I honestly couldn't believe it. Anyways, y'all, we were in the game for $700, and we ended up cashing out for $1,293, but that is including the high hands. So without the high hands, we made $193, and then with the high hands, we made $593. So anyways, y'all, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.